Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. Quick reminder with all this Binance stuff going around and we've had FTX, we've had all these crashes and then Ledger has just, they're, they're coming out with the Ledger stacks. I've already pre-ordered mine. I'll put a link in the top of the description. Um, this is how I'm storing my digital assets or most of them. Uh, so this thing, it, they've made it to look kind of like a mini iPhone. So I'm really excited about that. <laughs> Okay, so so last I think it was last night Charles Hoskinson went back on and decided to. This guy obviously has some kind of attention issues or something. I look, the, the guy's smart. I've always admired the guy, but there's a reason. I don't know what it is, but there's some reason that he keeps trying to get the get this attention. It's kind of like this poor me stuff. It's kind of childish in, in a way. And, but this, this guy here is kind of saying it right. He's acting like the XRP community randomly attacked him. He's, 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 uh, he, he floated a rumor about an, a Ripple settlement. And then he's, he was do, that was in his AMA. And then he goes on and he, and he does a, um, one of those Twitter lives. And then he throws it again. But he changes it and said he, he's heard a rumor that it's a... a a judge's decision or on summary judgment that could be coming out. And so then he wonders why we're all picking up on it. There's a lot of people, this guy's making right. There's a lot of people who, who uh, stand to gain or lose based on that happening. So of course, a lot of people are going to lock on to it. But then he also, this is the, the, when, when the XRP community first went after this guy, it wasn't just for the sake of it and and nobody i certainly wasn't and wouldn't condone anybody harassing him i'm just i locked in on what he kept saying that was not true that he said we said what he was trying two things are going on here with charles hoskinson first of all he's trying to attribute this who who and the official cool guy points it out who said the sec was bribed he keeps saying that the the xr he's painting it like the XRP community as a whole has said that the SEC as a whole was bribed by the Ethereum Foundation or the Ethereum people or whatever. That has never been said. We've gotten very, very specific on what we thought, thought went on. And he's never addressed any of those very, very specific things about Hinman and how he was getting paid by the Ethereum Foundation and how that was a conflict of interest. Charles Hoskinson has never gone anywhere into the details of that because he can't. If he goes into the details of that, he's wrong as he can be. But we certainly have not made some blanket statement like he keeps trying to say, which is not true. And I, he can call it whatever he wants. I disagree because he's wrong. That has not been, certainly not been my position and the, the responsible people in the XRP community. Certainly, that has not been what we've been saying. The other part of this that's going on is he's acting like a child and he's saying, okay, well, every time I say anything that they treat me really bad and therefore, and now he's saying, therefore, now I'm not going to go to any conference where anybody having to do with XRP is. That's like saying, um, that's like me saying, well, every time I talk to Christians, those Christians, uh, they always attack me and they're mean to me. And so therefore I'm not going to ever go around any Christians. That is the most, that is such a childlike, silly stance. I cannot believe that this guy has turned out to be so opposite to what I thought he was. I, and that's all I'm going to say on that. But Jungle Link did say this. Sam Bankman Freed was clearly effective in buying off both regulators and members of Congress and the Senate. Congressman Davidson believes he's been jailed, so Congress can't question him. Yet the idea Hinman was bought off as some fantastical conspiracy. Remember, we're grand, that's what Hoskinson calls, it's a grand conspiracy. Um, yet the idea Hinman was bought off as some fantastical conspiracy. We have the money trail, 15 million cash to Director Hinman directly from the Ethereum Alliance member. Sensitive Chuck can stick his head in the sand all he wants. 
We have been right all along. He interjects himself, then runs to his safe space. That don't fly. I agree with Jungle Inc. here. Now, Stuart Alderati threw out the Sam Bankman Freed, Kevin O'Leary um, interview. I mean, the, the uh, CNBC interview with Kevin O'Leary. And he says, uh, Kevin O'Leary and all other venture investors in FTX should immediately demand that the SEC stop spending taxpayer money on its tag-along case against SBF, since that case only seeks to recover on their behalf. I think Stuart Alderati smells something nasty, like I do. Um, Eleanor Terrett had tweeted this out yesterday, and this got me to, I mean, I zoned in on this, because look, as I've said, ETHgate's bigger than FTX, folks, and I almost feel like FTX is somewhat of a distraction away from it. One person, one of the central people in everything that we're watching is Katie Hahn. And I don't ever, th I, I've always, she even blocked me at one point. She and Chris Dixon from Andrews and Horowitz blocked me because we were uncovering the Eastgate thing and their names kept popping up. Well, and her name has now popped up with the FTX thing. Eleanor Terrett, who I have to wonder if she, Eleanor Terrett's on to something because she tweeted this out. Looks like this previously public video was recently made private. So this video, which was on YouTube, we've talked about it before. It was made private, okay? And so, um, and and so Wheezy here pulls in what, the part that I think is the reason they set it to private. And she said she says in here, she said, now it appears to be public again. And that's when all of us started locking on. But here's what she said. Your story is really interesting to me. And we were talking about this a little bit backstage. So Katie actually went to the Stanford Law School and studied with Sam's mother. And father. And father. So, they so there's that. I, that I, but they had actually never met in person until just now. Well, and for a couple decades. For, right. Since Sam then. might yeah, be the first person in crypto little, I ever he, met. She knew Sam when he was a little <laughs> kid. But now, I, she might mean that first person in crypto she ever met, as in she met him when he was a baby. If it's something different... I'll show you where she came from, but since her name came up, I, I said she was involved in the Ripple 2015 FinCEN settlement, just happened to be at Stanford when Jay Clayton spoke and the next day went to A16Z, that's when they formed the Venture Capital Working Group that became the Ethereum Free Pass, just happened to know Sam Bankman Freed and his parents, just happened to leave government and become worth millions shortly after. And look, here's the timeline, Bill Hinman Ethereum Free Pass timeline, May 5th, 2015. She's the assistant U.S. attorney that signs off on the FinCEN Ripple settlement. Then January 24th, 2018, Jay Clayton speaking at Stanford. She happens to be in the front row, asks him a question. The very next day, he goes over to Andrews and Horwitz and meets with Chris Dixon, who later becomes her partner at Andrews and Horwitz. And they put together the whole group that ends up getting the Ethereum free pass. April 12, 2018, Yahoo Finance article. She says, I had the occasion to meet with Jay Clayton at, a, at Stanford recently. Not sure if she's referencing the 24th, but maybe. Um, June 25th, 2018, Andrew Dries and Horwitz announces hiring Katie Hahn as a general partner. She will co-lead a $300 million crypto fund with Chris Dixon, the same guy that Jay Clayton designated to form the Venture Capital Working Group. The fund will be able to invest 20% in Bitcoin. Okay, it's important that you know those things as we go along here. Well, here's the picture of her, January 24th, 2018. Jay Clayton's right there. She's asking a question. There's Joseph Grunfest, okay? Then we have this. Ripple has been uh, putting out the stuff this morning. Then there's this. This is her from 2017. It's auctioned them off. Um, but uh, so yes, we, we can do that and we should do that. In fact, um, a case against an exchange in the United States that uh, my office did uh, involving Ripple Labs uh, in 2013, this we brought the first ever uh, enforcement action against a virtual currency company ever. We teamed up with FinCEN to do so, and they had to pay also and forfeit um, a $700,000 penalty. Also, they had to take a number of remedial steps, so now they collect customer data. They must have follow all AML laws, know your customers, and they collect customer identity. But I think that the asset forfeiture laws are an important tool as part of this. 
um, that's particular. I wonder why she didn't go after Joseph Lubin and those guys about making sure that they're doing AML. After all, he does have all those disguised whales, right? That nobody seems to want to be interested in finding out who they are. Um, and then there's this from Cowboy Crypto. Um, you know, the official cool guy said I needed to give him a title. I thought he kind of already had a title, but today we're going to make him the official cowboy of the digital asset investor channel. Okay. Um, Tamika Tillman is, is counsel at Hawn Ventures, which is Katie Hawn's firm now. He was recently with Andrews and Horwitz, also worked as a speechwriter for the lady that we don't name whose husband used to be president and Joe Biden. Home Ventures has invested in exponential De DeFi and Aptos with Circle, FTX, Solana, A16Z, Apollo, where Jay Clayton is, Binance, Coinbase, Multicoin Capital, the two guys that shorted, that, that proudly announced that they were going to short XRP back in 2018 because they thought the SEC would eventually go after them for XRP being a security. They're also, they're, they're two of their limited partners or Andrews and Horwitz and Union Square Ventures, both of the venture capital firms in the venture capital working group that, have, that eventually got work to get the Ethereum free pass and PayPal. All right, this is the video that was, that was uh, on private and is now not private again. Um, then um, there was, okay, it says, she said, that, she said that he's the first person she met in crypto. She's either talking about when she, she met him as a baby or, she, if the first person she met in crypto, when she first got in crypto, she was working on the Silk Road. So I'm assuming, I'm, just, I'm gonna assume. Now, this video came out by coincidence, folks. See, I'm seeing these things pop up, and when I'm seeing this, these things pop up, I do a simple search on Katie Hahn, and it turns out that people are starting to smell something. So I went and I found this video. This is a video and you can go to the whole video right here. The curious case of Katie Horn is what this guy calls it. And I'm just going to let you, I'm going to let you hear it right here. Watch this. So she, uh, she goes to Stanford Law, then she spends a decade as a federal prosecutor uh, for the, the DOJ, um, and she's, you know, and then she creates at one time the government's cryptocurrency task force. And we know her because she was involved with or helped, uh, I think after the fact, with the Silk Road case. So the Silk Road was, you know, that website where people were buying and selling drugs and you know, you could buy anything, assassination attempts, you could buy a lot of, a lot of crazy shit on there. Um, they eventually take Ross down in your, in your neighborhood uh, in San Francisco. And after the fact, they, you know, have all this Bitcoin from, because Silk Road was using Bitcoin for most of the purchases. And so she's involved in that case. That's kind of how she got on my radar was she did a great interview with Tim Ferriss where she's talking about that story. So, you know, I hear the story, that's kind of amazing. Like um, this person who like, you know, was just grinding it out as part of the government. And that's kind of was the impression I had of her, was this like awesome civil servant. So imagine the look on my face when I hear that Katie Hahn just purchased a $41 million home in Atherton. $41 million home? What's going on, what's going on here, Katie Hahn? Like, what do you, well, how so, much do you have to be worth to buy me, $41 me million typing, home? Go, go to DOJ, average salary, federal prosecutor, 94000 250000 Okay, so she worked there for 10,000 years? No, okay, that's not it. So <laughs> what, what's, what's been going on? So Katie Hahn at one point. <laughs> she, with that DOJ salary, she could pay her property taxes for a month. <laughs> yeah, the gardener is like, yeah. you know, and her property is making that. So... So, but you know, she, she made a switch. So she did the decade there and she's doing these, like, I forgot what you call them, like the Rico cases. It was like these crazy, like drug cases, cartel stuff. And then she makes the leap and she comes, all of a sudden she's a VC. So uh, she becomes a VC at Andreessen Horowitz in 2018. She joins as a general partner. Uh, the year before that, 2017, she was named to the board of Coinbase. That's interesting. I guess like, you know, they wanted a divor uh, diverse board member who had a different background. Coinbase no, you can't, you can't say that she's a diver. I mean, that's bullshit. No, that I'm saying like her, her work history. So she's not a business it, okay. person. She's from like a regular, the regulatory, like, you know, okay, cool. side of things. That's her expertise. So that's a good person to have on your board. Somebody who know who was part of the government's cryptocurrency task force. Definitely see the value there. But how much value? 
is what I got to ask. That's the question of the day. How much value? And was this too much value? Okay, so she joins the board and she gets... Uh, so, okay, no, on the day of her IPO, it was worth $73 million. That was April 14th, 2021. And um, she sold pretty much the top. So she was selling at... Uh, yeah, uh, you know, she was she was sold at that that price, and then she sold even more as it went up to like whatever three hundred something dollars a share. Uh, it's currently trading, you know, for far less than that. So let's see what Coinbase is trading at today. Coin stock price, I think like forty something bucks a share. Yeah, forty one dollars a share. So she sold it at like the whatever three hundred three eighty well, you know three eighties wow. uh, type type of range. Almost and ten times. So so sells the absolute top. But what I have to, the, the question I have, and so I'm not saying she did anything wrong or illegal, yeah, more power to you. What I don't understand is, why did this person get $100 million for sitting on the board? Is that not an outrageous number? So like, there, I don't think there's any wrongdoing, but God damn, how did somebody make so much for doing so little? Like, a board seat, you know, a board member does not work very hard for the company. A board member does not usually create this much value. I thought is board members typically an, got like 250000 a year. Like yeah, that's the normal like, board compensation. So what I want to know is why did this board member get $100 million? <laughs> I'm not saying she did anything wrong either. I'm just saying what in the world. She's tied in to all. She keeps the, the being intersected by all these things that are that are happening. And so. It's interesting that she just kind of disappears. No, she's not talking right now. Bank of International Settlements just finalized policy to let banks hold 2% of reserves in Bitcoin. That's $3.6 trillion. Then we've got this from Empower. Demands all records, including calendar entries, notes, or emails with specific lists of individuals from Simpson, Thatcher, Ethereum Alliance. Empower lists the Simpson, Thatcher. So Empower is going back at them. And uh, crypto law calls it a throw down, escalates, uh, empower escalates legal fight versus for the Hinman files. Um, and then John Deaton says the SEC continues to lack faithful allegiance to the law. Um, empower sued SEC via Freedom of Information Act. SEC agreed to search for the emails of the names listed below, but failed to do so after agreeing. They absolutely have emails and already did the search for some of those names. Um, so anyway, the, the SEC has been giving a, the runaround. And look at those names, folks. Look whose name's here. That's Chris Dixon, same guy we mentioned a few minutes ago. Um, there's all kinds of names on this list right here that I'd love to see those emails. Here's one. Boy, oh boy, I'd love to see those emails. Okay, and then there was this. I, I just want to show you this. I don't know who this guy is, but he was bashing Ripple. We're used to that kind of stuff. Bashing XRP, Matt Hamilton weighed in, but then Bob Way comes in here. Bob Way is back, um, and he's uh, he's like, if he talked to Dave and us back in 2013, he was likely just one of many XRP hating Bitcoiners. Nothing he said in the video distinguishes him from any other. And then um, Bob Way was like, is like actively talking. I always, I always wondered, wondered if Bob Way disappeared from social media. He was there for a year or so actively answering questions about that XRP community members had, then he left. And I always wondered if, if um, someone got to him and said, you can't keep talking uh, like that as an ex-employee. Uh, but now he's back, which makes me wonder if people are getting out from under NDAs or something. Bob Way seen hanging out. My favorite Bob Way quote, this is Bob Way right here, by the way. This was from his LinkedIn page a few years back. If, you, if any of you are, are still wondering if we're right about what we thought XRP was, this, this is the quote for you. Several people left fancy jobs and joined Ripple because, I paraphrase, if we caption, e capture even a minor fraction of the international payments market, do you know the value XRP will need to have to support that? Do the math. Really, really big trade number divided by 100 billion XRP. Wow. Those sort of conversations always buoyed my spirits and made me smile. But really, they also gave me anxiety and made me remember that my job was to make sure we don't all F this up. Folks, I realize that people at Ripple and all those kind of people, they probably got mad that he was saying things like this at the time. 
they probably don't need people like him saying these kind of things. But anybody that tells you that, that the XRP price would not necessarily need to, to be to go up in conjunction with the whole the overall scheme and the overall plan is not telling the truth because we've been right all along. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that Bob Way seems to paint a an ob the obvious picture we've all been thinking here about XRP and its price going up.